feel like not a day goes by where I don't see an article or see a media piece about the rising inequality in the United States. And this is because we live in an unprecedented era where three individuals can own more wealth than the bottom half of the country. Now, numerous studies have been done on the health and societal effects of rising inequality, but as a psychologist, I wondered about the psychological effects that it has on people. People live their lives with moral beliefs and moral standards that they have, but rising inequality may make it difficult to maintain these standards. And so what happens? My research investigates the extent that rising inequality and the effect it has on our moral character. Now, to give you an analogy, I want you to imagine a situation in which tomorrow you find out you've just won the lottery. How do you think your life would change? Well, obviously you'd be a lot richer, but do you think it would fundamentally change your moral character? Perhaps before winning the lottery, you believe that people ought to give 10% of their income to charity, which is a standard that's common across many religious practices. Would you continue to do so? After all, 10% of those lottery winnings is a lot of money, and you might give a little less or perhaps none at all. This is the scenario that I recreated in the lab experimentally in order to study how inequality affects people's ability to maintain those moral standards. Across many studies now, I bring people into the lab to play games with real monetary consequences. If you are a participant in one of my studies, I would pair you up with another individual and give you a, uh, a random endowment, um, kind of like winning the lottery. So sometimes you get a little bit, but sometimes you get a lot. And with this money, you have a choice of, to donate some of it to a public good. And in the real world, public goods are the things that things like taxation provides. So these are the libraries, the roads, and the bridges that everyone gets to enjoy and use. In our game, it's not so different. Any amount contributed to the public good is increased by 150% and then redistributed evenly to both partners. So like taxes, you would prefer to shirk on your responsibility, but of course the system only works when everyone contributes their fair share. Now the situation I described is one of equality, but sometimes participants were given a lot less than their partner, and sometimes they were given a lot more. After describing all these rules, I asked participants a very simple question. How much will you contribute to the public good? And this has to be done before they find out how much money they're gonna be given. So it's given as a percentage. They can say 0%, all the way up to 100%, any amount they want. And it's completely private and non-binding. It's just an opportunity to reflect on the moral standards that they have for themselves in this cooperative context. Now the results I'm gonna show you today have two profound and striking discoveries. First, we can examine how overall inequality affects cooperation. So we have situations of equality, when both partners are given the same amount, to um, unequal contributions, unequal endowments, which is when one partner has a lot more than the other. And we're looking as a function of the amount that people gave to the pu public good out of their total endowment. So we can see that inequality powerfully drives cooperation such that when things are the most unequal, this is the least value creation in terms of our public institutions. So inequality is driving down cooperation, but not all inequality is created equal. So we can also examine the situations when you were poorer, had the same amount, or richer than your partner. And now we're looking at it as a function of your ability to keep that moral standard you made for yourself. So if you're able to keep it, your data would fall along the red dashed line, and to the extent that you gave less than you said you would, we would be going downwards on the graph. So when you're poorer than your partner, you do actually give a little bit less than you said you would, but it's a pretty small effect. And importantly, when people have the same amounts, people actually give a little more than their moral standards. It's almost as if it makes us better people. What about situations when you're richer? Well, when you're richer, inequality powerfully drives behavior such that people are much more likely to break those pledges. And this is because wealth creates moral hypocrites. It provides an incentive to systematically lower your moral standards to be in line with your newfound financial status. Now in science, no set of studies has all the answers. But I think these results tell a compelling story that economic inequality corrupts moral standards. In our society, people vehemently argue for egalitarian and pro-social motives, and I have no doubt that everyone in the audience would do so today. But these results suggest, if we were to come into a sudden windfall, that we would lower the same moral standards, the one we consider intrinsic to our very being, to account for this newfound status. 
I believe my research matters because I believe policymakers and citizens should understand the effects of the rising inequality that we're experiencing and how it corrupts our internal moral compasses for the worse.